Good morning. What a wonderful honor just to share this time with you again. Today I want to speak on keep your promise. Now let us just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence today through and by the price that Jesus Christ paid. He has paid the way that we can come to you. We honor you and we praise you and we vow to give you alone the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, is it not wonderful to have all the beautiful promises in the Word of God and to know that we may and can stand on them, that God will never leave us nor forsake us? Now, let us just look at a few of them. But, but I'm warning you, there's a catch coming towards the end. But, but I want to start with this. I want to say to you, I want to, 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 to just assure you that we can and may trust God in everything, every step of the way. So in Numbers 23 verse 19 we read, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So we know that God will not lie to us. That means he did not lie to us in the word, the letter that he left you and me, so that we can have something on our daily walk with him. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And because of this scripture is why Paul can write to the Hebrew people and declares the following in Hebrews 13 verse, verse 6. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? There are 365 verses in the Bible, 365 instances where God says, fear not. So for every day of the normal year, you and I have got a promise that God says, you do not need, need to fear. Paul says, what can man do to me? Somebody once says, there are almost 8 billion people in the world. Why will you let one person of that 8 billion spoil your day? Why will one put you in fear? Why will you fear that one? Now listen to God's promise in Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. So by now you should be shouting hallelujah and praising God for His goodness, for, for this beautiful promises in the Word of God. You should have been praising Him by now. He says, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I am your child. Thank you for what you have done to me. And thank you for your Word that is steadfast and sure. Thank you. And I haven't even started. Reading the promises of healing, of salvation, of, of uh, provision, none of that. Do you know? Do you know that within the 66 books of the Bible, there are approximately 8,810 main promises? As we acknowledge the scriptures were written by men who were inspired by God, 2 Timothy 3 16 to 17. And the promises we read in the Bible today all belong to God. It will all certainly fulfill Joshua 21, 45 and uh, Joshua 23, verse 14. These are just certain promises. The total count of all the promises in the Bible is, is a, a, around 30,000 rand. Uh, pardon me. Is around 30,000. Why did God do this? Why did God give us all these promises? Just for the fun? Just for the sake of it? No. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 For His divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of Him who called us by and to His own glory and excellence His virtue. By means of these 
He has bestowed on us. So, so what is he saying? Through the promises. He has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises. So that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, the rottenness and corruption that is in the world. Because of covetousness, lust and greed. And become sharers, partakers of the divine nature. So God has given us all these promises. That we can know that whatever area there are in your life, God says, I've got a promise for you to hang on to. You've got a word. And I, somebody once says, if you've got one word of God, you can run till the end. One word. One word. One promise. God, I know that you will never leave me nor forsake you. When you are sick, Lord, you have promised you will not put the, 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 the illnesses, the sicknesses, the diseases of the infirmities of Egypt on me. You will help me. I can stand on your word. The Bible says to your uh, stripes, Lord Jesus, I am healed. You have set us free. You have delivered us from bondage. We have come over, according to Corinthians, from the darkness into light. We are now your children. And now, now I want to come to the crux of this message today. I have told you, there's going to be a slight just uh, twist in this. We love it to hear of God's promises. We love reading it. We love even knowing a few and keeping them in our hearts. Says, Lord, this is my scriptures, my promises that I'm holding on to you. Maybe it was a prophetic word that was given you from one of the promises of God. And says, this is yours. I want you to hold on to this. So this is nice. And it is nice to know and wonderful to know that, that, that God promised to stand by us, to never leave us, never forsake us. We just love it. But we forgot that He has told us that Jesus Christ is our example. Also in, in the book of Peter, He has said that I have set you an example. Jesus Christ is the example. So he's, He told us, I do nothing unless I see my Father in heaven do it. So we must understand that if He then is our uh, promise, if He is our example, if He is the one that sets the trend, that, that sets the example, that we should follow. Then I need to ask you. A very simple question. Are you keeping. The promises. That you made. To him from your side. Listen to the Bible. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 4. When you vow a vow. Or make a pledge to God. Do not put off paying it. For God has no pleasure in fools, those who witlessly mock Him. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow, than that you should vow and not pay. Do not allow your mouth to cause your body to sin. And do not say before the messenger, the priest, that it was an error or a mistake. Why should God be made angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands? For in a multitude of dreams there is futility and worthlessness and ruin in a flood of words. But reverently fear God, revere and worship Him, knowing that He is. We must understand that day, that moment, that hour, that, that, that minute when we stood and said, Lord, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Not because of anything, but because He paid the price that I owed. The debt that I owed, he pray, paid for that with his life. A dear, dear price. And today, whenever you go to a place, when you apply for a loan at a bank, that is an institution, a financial institution, but they don't just hand over the money that you lent from them. Now there's certain requirements. They say, we will help you. We will help you out. Uh, we will help you buy that property. We will help you buy that vehicle. We will help you out with cash to, to get your cash flow going. But you must understand there are certain prerequisites, pre requirements that, that, that you need to adhere to. You need to pay every month. You need to... And, and then if you don't pay one month and, and the second month they're coming to say, we're coming to collect. And you say, well, well no, 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 you know that two months was just a joke. I was just playing with you. 
I can guarantee you they will not think you funny. They will not think you're the biggest comedian. They will tell you, we don't care what you say you've done. You better pay up. You better bring. And now I'm asking you, when, uh, did you, when, when you accept Jesus Christ, that is why all these promises are there. God says, this is the promises. This is what I'm offering you. But in return, I want your obedience. Well, can I call on you? Yes, Lord, you can call on me. Can I use you every day where you go? Yes, Lord, you can use me every day. And when God comes, and when He sends somebody across your way, when, when He asks you to do something for Him, what is your answer? Say, God, I'm too busy. And then something happens, and, and, and you say, oh, no, no, I was just joking. I was just making fun. You don't play with God. God isn't our playmate. God is, is, is so holy. He's, he's, he's so, so, so holy. He's so sovereign. We must come before Him and say, Lord, thank you that you... I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I can keep my promise back to you. But all I know is I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And because I need His strength and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I need to make sure from my side, the little that I do is that I try to, to be obedient in every way. I need to keep the room, the place where the Holy Spirit occupies inside of me. I need to keep it clean so that He will always be welcome there and to be able to to. to, to, to shine through me, to touch through me, to do things through me. Jesus promised that He will do His part for you. And not only did He promise it from the, from the Old Testament, but in the New Testament we see that all the promises that there will be a Messiah, that He will come, that He will, that, that Messiah will, will, will go in on our behalf, that He will be hurt, that He will be, be punished for us. He did it all. To the extent that on the cross he could call out and say it is finished. I've paid the price. I've paid it in advance. Where do I read that? The Bible says he uh, died for us while we were yet sinners. So he put his faith in you and me. He put his faith in that man on the street, that woman on the street, that drug addict, the murderer, the, 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 the prisoner and, or the offender in, in, in jail. He put his trust in us and he says, I will pay in advance, believing in you, that you too will keep your side of the bargain. So I'm asking, can we pray the following very short prayer? Yes, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your word. Thank you for showing us how to keep our word. And forgive others and ourselves when we fail. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Messiah, our King, our Lord. Amen. In this wonderful time, may you be reminded, we in South Africa have got the Day of the Covenant. It was yesterday that you keep the covenant. Were you obedient and said, Lord, I will think of you again on that day. Every year I will be reminded that you saved people that called out to you. That was all it was, people that called out to you. Today, the Bible says when we call, God answers. God bless you. Worship you.